Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Facts vs. Fantasies for Negroes, a reply, part 1. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, all the time I lived here, I never once heard of those detestable and unnatural crimes of sodomy and bestiality so much practiced among Christians. Whether it is better to be Negro in morality or an European is with me easily decided. William Smith Esquire, 1744, appointed by the Royal African Company to survey their settlements and this is from the book A New Voyage to Guinea, published 1744 and from Henry Drummond in 1890. The life of the native African is not all ideal. It is darkened by a tragedy whose terrors are unknown to any other people under heaven. Of its mild domestic slavery I do not speak, nor of its revolting witchcraft, nor of its endless quarrels and frequent tribal wars. These minor evils are lost in the shadow of a great and national wrong. Among these simple and unprotected tribes, Arabs, uninvited strangers of another race and culture, pour in from the north and east with the deliberate purpose of making this paradise a hell. And this was from the book Tropical Africa by Henry Drummond, published 1890. Today, in this response video, we shall be responding to comments we received from our last video from someone called J.L. Mecca and another person called Daniel Jacobs. However, before we do that, we saw this disclaimer from the Nigerian army, which as you already know by now, they were the slave hunters. They were used by the slave master and his accomplices to capture and export Negroes as slaves during the slave trade, but they were renamed army in 1863 so that's the origin of the nigerian army you see today it used to be the entire army of that sub-region used as slave hunters during the slave trade so we saw this uh, disclaimer information or notice saying disregard doctored video aimed at denigrating the nigerian army and it goes further to say the attention of the Nigerian army has been drawn to a doctored video footage released by secessionist sympathizers on YouTube featuring blood images of some persons dressed in green camouflage destroying a farmland in an undisclosed location recently. In an attempt to denigrate the reputation and image of the Nigerian army, Authors of the video mischievously attributed the action of the persons to the military by falsely claiming they are soldiers and invariably personnel of the Nigerian army. In order not to waste too much time on it, let us speak some of the points. Remember, like we told you, these were the slave hunters. They lack humanity and common sense. They are still trained till tomorrow by the slave master. So we're not going to read the entire thing. But please we want you to pay very close attention to details and it goes further to say however following a fact-finding investigation on the video by subjecting it to credible reverse image it was discovered that the video was first published on youtube channel biafra boy remember that it was published on a youtube channel does not tell us where it came from or whether or not it is true but that's by the way the investigation also revealed that the image of the men in green camouflage was deliberately blurred to conceal their identity from viewers. Similarly, the authors failed to identify the location, community, or local government area the incident occurred. Remember, we told you these people, they lack humanity and common sense, but they are an Islamic army, the same way they were as a terror group used to capture and export Negro slaves. So, he goes on to say, Given these facts, it is apparent that the video footage is a deliberate propaganda by ESN to bring the reputation and image of the Nigerian army to disrepute by portraying personnel of the Nigerian army as enemies of the people. Now remember, they don't know where the video came from, but then they already know who was behind it and it has to be ESN. 
but not Boko Haram or Fulani Hetzmen because they are one and the same with them. Remember, like we told you, they were an Islamic jihadist slave hunting terror group used to capture and export Negroes as slaves. It was only renamed Army in 1863, which we challenge you to investigate. So he goes on to urge members of the public to be wary of such negative propaganda materials and subject them to thorough scrutiny. We therefore urge the public to please discountenance the propaganda video as it is the machination of mischief makers targeting the Nigerian army. And he concludes by saying, we reassure the general public that the Nigerian army will continue to operate professionally regardless of all divisive propaganda. We assure all peace-loving Nigerians of our commitment to aid civil authorities in the containment of security challenges in line with constitutional provisions. Onye Mawachuku, a house negro, Brigadier General, Director of Public Relations. Remember, they normally position some house negro. They were using John Enenche before. Now, this army is based on Islamic takia. They lie about everything, even things you are watching them do. When they raided and invaded Mazin and the Kano's house, killed over 28 people. Soon after that, they came out to deny publicly that they never did. Then they were using one house negro called John Enenche. But we now want to encourage you to follow the trial of Mazen Namdekano and you see how the court will avoid mentioning that part because they are above the law. They were the slave hunters. The same things they were doing back then is what they are still being used for today. You observe how they used somebody that looks like an Igbo name to sign it so people can be deceived to think that it is true. The video on your screen is the video they were talking about. You can see the army. Remember, they know that if the army had known that they were being videoed they would have killed whoever it was another thing you're gonna also hear them say or do is to announce that whoever knows where it happened should come and say and if you were to come out to say it this same army will come and kill you that's the what they do now we want you to watch this video these are series of abuses by the same army we want you to ask yourself why didn't they issue statements to deny them normally they will issue statements but of course they know they did it but they will never own up to what they did. Remember, they were brought up with that Islamic takia. They lie. That's all they do. If you look at people like Obasanjo, they were from that army. In the footage on your screen, you will see what they did during the Nigerian Biafran War. But if you were to ask them, they will now tell you that was a war situation. But they can't tell you where Biafran army did the same thing to any civilians. But normally what they will do, because they know that they are supported by the slave masters, especially the British. So they will dress and camouflage like Biafran soldiers and then massacre innocent men, women and children. Biafra did not have any radio at that time. The slave master imposed an air, land and sea blockade over Biafra. And then the BBC will tell the rest of the world that the rebels were killing women and children. So everybody will become visibly angry and biased against Biafra without knowing that it is the same people saying the lie that actually the killers. Remember we told you they were the unknown government. We shall prove that to you. But observe that they claimed it was ESN that was behind the video. Take note of the fact that they claim it was ESN. So how did they know? And that aside, these other ones that happened before ESN that was formed a few months ago was formed. Who was behind them? You see how smart they play. But like we told you, the BBC will either avoid talking about this or join them to say it was ESN. Now, if it is happening today that we are all awake and seeing what is happening, imagine what they could have done during the 1967-70 to 70 genocide in Biafra, which was also sponsored and supported by the British. And please never forget that this same army knows not to attack Fulani Hatsmen because as you would imagine, a dog recognizes its owner. It was the same army that jumped out from nowhere in a supposed democracy to declare that IPOB was a terrorist group because they were looking for an excuse the same way they used the excuse of paganism at that time to be capturing and exporting the Negroes as slaves. So please if you are in the diaspora or anywhere around the world and you hear these statements from the so-called Nigerian army or from the BBC just know that it's a lie. They are always lying against others. These were the slave hunters. 
and they are sponsored, supported, and trained by the slave master, especially the British. They were all against Trump because Trump refused to, to sell weapons to them. But now that they have their man there, they have now started getting new weapons and tokanos and flights and all that. So if you started seeing them bombing innocent people, don't believe their lies. These were the slave hunters. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. And we're sorry. There is no better way to say it. And to our topic of today, facts versus fantasies and illusions. Have you ever heard Southerners in Nigeria suggest that the slave hunters renamed Nigerian army in 1863 are protecting them? Do you observe their reaction when you ask them how or why the same army does not attack or stop Fulani herdsmen and bandits, or even Boko Haram? And please do not be deceived by some of their lies. All they do is lies. They will come and publish how 300 Boko Haram were murdered, but they will never show you any pictures. And even if they did, your question should have been, in a short space of time, how could they have calculated the number? Remember, they normally put an accurate number. Likewise, you notice that some of the time they will tell you that 300 bandits attacked a police station. Those are all lies. Those are subterfuges. They are trying to make you think that there is something happening in the north. That's why you notice that the moment they saw ESN trying to protect our farmlands in the south, they now came after them. That's why they went after Kano. Remember, it is not them directly that went for Kano. It is the British. Ask yourself, how could he have been held for eight days in Kenya? And they didn't tell the British. They only told Nigeria. To arrange to come and take him but the british knows who their slave hunting accomplices are he knows they lack humanity and common sense that's why he wants them to come and pick him so understand whatever is happening there is the slave master hiding behind his slave hunting accomplices and so what about when they claim that jesus or god heals disabled people and sick people do you also observe their reaction when you ask to be shown any man or woman born blind, deaf or crippled, healed by either Jesus or God? And what about Mohammedans, now called Muslims? Do you observe their reaction when reminded that it was the Mohammedans, now called Muslims, that captured and sold the Negroes as slaves, along with the Christians anyway, but they try to lie that Islam forbids slavery without telling people that it forbids enslavement of a fellow Muslim, not that it forbids slavery. It forbids enslavement of a fellow Muslim. It was threats of slave trade and slave raids that made people back in what was Negro land and Guinea and the Negroes precisely to convert to Islam. And so, have you ever tried to compare their reaction with the reaction of a child at the concrete operational stage of cognitive development based on Piaget's theory? Say between 7 to 11 years of age, when you tell them that Santa Claus does not exist, do you compare the reactions with what we just highlighted above and the reaction of those children? Have you ever heard about Negro spirituals and the Negroes who believe that God ordained them for slavery and will come down to not only save them from slavery but get them to enslave their present masters? You probably have heard that before but if not, that's what some of them believe. So permit us then to ask you, are these facts or fantasies or illusions? The child that believes that Santa Claus exists and could visit all homes and all children all over the world in one night and give each and every one of them gifts. The adult man or woman from the southern part of Nigeria that believes that the Nigerian army is protecting him but will watch the same army kill his siblings for asking for freedom but then the same army will tell them it's about their territorial integrity or whatever that garbage means but the same people will be there and the slave master will come from Europe, see a portion of the same country they claim they are killing their brothers over to Cameroon, and they can't even issue a statement, let alone condemn it. But a southern adult man or woman still believes the army is protecting them. What about an adult man or woman, especially Negroes? Remember, our video is mostly centered around Negroes who were formerly called Ethiopians that believes that Jesus heals or that God could protect him, but the slave master that is coming to kill him comes with a gun. The Fulanese believe that Allah gave them the entire land in West and Central Africa, but they don't come or wait for Allah to help them get the land. They come with guns made by the slave masters. 
when they talk about corporate existence of Nigeria, they claim that God made it. But then, their God is not the creator of heaven and earth. Their God is the slave masters, especially the British. Something in common. One thing the Mohammedans, now called Muslims and Christians, have in common is that they are both united against the Negroes, who they then called pagans, albeit falsely, because they can't tell you the criteria with which they decided to designate whatever the Negroes were doing as paganism. But then, both Mohammedanism and Christianity were instruments of slavery and subjugation of the Negroes. These are what they have in common. And the Negroes falsely called pagans were actually the real followers of the truth of creation and the creator of heaven and earth, which you can very easily call nature. And both Mohammedanism, now called Islam, and Christianity are both anti-nature and inorganic. And now to the comments we are responding to from one user called J. L. Mecca and another user called Daniel Jacobs. We want to state our position from the beginning and that simple position is our biggest proof that Islam and Christianity are not true. And that position remains that if they were true, the slave master and his accomplices would be the last to give them to the Negroes. This is before we start referencing records that prove that they are not true and that there is no salvation in them. Think about it. Let's say you are from Biafra or Ambazonia. The same people that are providing weapons to the oppressors, getting people to kill innocent people there, couldn't have given you that religion, be it Islam or Christianity, if they had any powers in them. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. Common sense shows or proves that. You can look at Biafra for example, you can see how much effort the British is putting behind his accomplices to kill innocent people, to keep one Nigeria. And you are telling us that they could have given you Jesus or Mohammed if those things had any salvation in them. And before you forget, remember that during the genocide of 1967-70, Harold Wilson, a British Prime Minister, imposed an air, land and sea blockade over Biafra, prevented the supply of any type of medical things or drugs or anything on the premise that they could be used to smuggle weapons and above all he ordered the bombing of marketplaces churches and schools when they are in session so that's why they don't like anyone to talk about the war because they know that they are guilty and their accomplices also know that they are not only guilty but they are part of it that's why you will never hear the british condemn those killings going on there because if they did they know that their accomplices could develop some level of common sense or humanity and say but you sent us so that's why you will never hear them condemn it the bbc will run around it and if you are one of those that think that the bbc could have reported the demonstrations for freeing Kano in london you will see that they did it mostly in pigeon knowing that bbc world is the one most people listen to those who do not understand pigeon will not listen to anything like that you see how subtle the slave master is and you still somehow believe they could have given you salvation if there was some in jesus or muhammad it's impossible and so the first comment from daniel jacobs says it is this your foolishness of quoting the bible as the british god that puts you and keeps you in slavery come here and ask me for references as usual and the one from jl maker says the renaissance thank you for your videos i really learned from you and it has since given me a test of research and investigation but i have to admit that when you talk about christianity you are wrong your latest video testify on this the teachings of jesus christ have nothing to do with muhammad in fact in the bible he corresponds to the definition of an antichrist and it is not the one who says he is a christian who really is even jesus said so matthew 7 21 and allah have nothing to do with the gods of the jews and the christians the quran said so surat 5 18 and surat 4 171 surat 6 101 I invite you to read the North African Church by Julius Lloyd, published in 1880. You will see that in fact, Africa was first Christian in the first century after Christ, well before Europe and Constantine, and already at that time, there were already heresies and sects which said they were Christian, nothing new under the sun. We can't finish reading all he's saying, but we will go forward to add to what we said already, that if Christianity and Islam had anything like salvation in them 
the slave master and his accomplices would never even bring them near the Negroes. They won't even hear that it existed, let alone give it to them. And our simple proof today remains both the slave trade and Ambazonia and Biafra that are struggling for freedom. And the same slave master is calling them separatist rebels and secessionists. But while those are by the way, let us use some records based on what these users are saying to show them at least what they need to know before we look at their books. And in the event you are somebody that believes so much in the books, remember people we are relating with nature or the creator of heaven and earth if you choose to use those terms before the invention of books or writing or printing. So there is no way you can use those books to claim that anything the slave masters could have given the Negroes can in any way shape or form be said to be true when they cannot even say ordinary truth about them. They did the slave trade, they denied it, they killed in Biafra, they are denying it, they are killing today, they are also denying it, but you want to believe they could have brought them anything true, which is impossible. And above all, hypothetically speaking, imagine if we are from a family of say six children, and let's say four of you were in boarding house, and your parents wrote a letter to four of you that are in the boarding house, and each of your letters were given to the two that were at home. If those ones that were at home came to your schools and delivered the letters, does it in any way, shape or form give those two that were at home the right to now tell you how to relate with your parents simply because the letter they claimed your parents wrote were actually delivered through them? The answer would be no. So book or no book, those are not our interest. Our interest is to show this user that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He is under the yoke, but he may not know. So you notice where he cited the book published sometime in 1880 and remember he also mentioned about Jay not being there or being there but those are not our interest so all we need to debunk what he's writing here is to look at books published before 1880 and what they were saying and again before we do that let us quickly look at some little history of the negro so that when we use terms like ethiopians or Igbos, it won't be misconstrued as referring to the current day ethiopia or a particular portion of the negro race so we are looking at it in generality of all the negroes so we reference abiokuta and the cameroons mountains an exploration by richard f borton in two volumes volume one published 1863 and please remember that this basically covers what you have as southern Nigeria today and then the southern Cameroons. So look at Biafra and Ambazonia. It will help you understand what we're trying to say. And so it says Abeokuta under stone, the present capital of the Iwa or Aku race and without comparison the most important position in the broadlands which we know by the name of Yoruba is as might be expected a Tretavia four volumes upon the subject have been alluded to in the following pages two of these are by the weaker sex and the authoresses who are not travelers have produced neat little drawing room sketches all colored the rose the african as you see him upon the walls of the royal academy now dressed up and musked now subjected to the old stock horrors slave driving for instance which he is made to endure with all the gestures of a Briton. It is in fact Ethiopia viewed through European eyes. So what we want you to take note of here is Ethiopia and then they were. And we hope you noticed that it said they were they were or Akurais. Then they were later subsumed into Yoruba because the slave master's conquest is multifaceted which we are going to continue to elucidate on this channel. So you see how his jihad is going on there. At least it will help us debunk the concept of Islam and Christianity being a path to some salvation according to the slave master and his accomplices. And also a little look at Negroes in the New World. Let us reference the myth of the Negro past by Melville J. Heskovitz and this was published 1941 and here we are told that the myth of the Negro past is one of the principal supports of race prejudice in this country. Unrecognized in its efficacy, it rationalizes discrimination in everyday contact between Negroes and whites, influences and shaping of policy where Negroes are concerned, and 
affects the trends of research by scholars whose theoretical approach methods and systems of thought presented to students are in harmony with it. So we want you to take note of the fact that it also affects the trends of research when it concerns the Negroes. So that's why the slave master has the temerity to bring the likes of Deng Calloway and Kurimo Ahau to start telling them that they are Native Americans. But our main interest is where it says, this myth of the Negro past which validates the concept of Negro inferiority may be outlined as follows. Negroes are naturally of a childlike character and adjust easily to the most unsatisfactory social situations which they accept readily and even happily in contrast to the American Indians who preferred extinction to slavery. So you see why the slave master is using his accomplices against Biafra and Ambazonia. He has been doing this for centuries so that's why he keeps persisting coming from all angles to ensure that the Negroes remain slave forever. That's what the slave master is all about in Biafra and Ambazonia. So we want you to ask yourself, how come they are all united against these two groups? None of them, even their media, do not report the atrocities of their slave hunting accomplices. We shall ultimately also show you the relationship between your COVID-19 and the slave trade. And while taking note of what we just read, which is why you hear them now telling them that they are Native Americans, remember, the essence is for the next generation to be deceived not to know that there was such atrocity meted out to them. That's all the slave master is working on with Ben Calloway and Kurimo Ahau. You don't need to believe us, but sit back and ask yourself, what's the point? What is their destination? What did they intend to benefit? Remember, somebody who did not pay you damages or reparations when you acknowledged or and they acknowledged too that they wronged you cannot pay you when you now say you are Native American. So what are they paying you for? And it goes on further to say, only the poorer stock of Africa was enslaved. The more intelligent members of the African communities raided having been clever enough to elude the slavers' nets. Please remember that the slave master is a subtle beast. This is why you see that Namdekano was allegedly abducted in Kenya. That's because the slave master wants to present the picture of how black people are evil. Like we told you, believe it or not, they are accomplices. The Fulanese, for example, the Nigerian army, they are conditioned with a lack of humanity and common sense. They don't have honor. They don't have shame. So that's why the slave master knows how to play these little tricks so that on the average, you will think it's the same black people killing themselves. So when you hear Nam the kind of talking about how evil black people are, you will look at what happened, how he was betrayed, and now think that, oh, this is how the people are, without knowing that it is the slave master, especially the British, that is behind everything that is happening to him. And it goes on further here to say, since the Negroes were brought from all parts of the African continent, which is a lie, spoke diverse languages, which is true, represented greatly differing bodies of custom, and as a matter of policy, were distributed in the new world so as to lose tribal identity, no least common denominator of understanding or behavior could have possibly been worked out by them. And the fourth one says, even granting enough Negroes of a given tribe had the opportunity to live together and that they had the will and ability to continue their customary modes of behavior. The cultures of Africa were so savage and relatively so low in the scale of human civilization that the apparent superiority of European customs as observed in the behavior of their masters would have caused and actually did cause them to give up such aboriginal traditions as they may otherwise have desired to preserve. Please remember that these are some of the things that give the slave masters the temerity to come up with all kinds of lies against the Negroes including how they could have been naked or how they were killing their twins and all that. Bear that in mind. But the fifth one says, the Negro is thus a man without a past, which is what they keep on trying to achieve all the time. Let us also reference the history, civil and commercial, of the British colonies in the West Indies by Brian Edwards in three volumes, volume 2, published 1801, and here we are told that the slaves purchased on this part of the coast have the general denomination of Igbos, 
probably from Arebo, the name of a village formerly a considerable town on the river Benin. Some of them, a tribe I believe, from the interior country are likewise called Mokos. One of the things we want to ask you is, how come you believe you are Urobo, Ishekiri or Ejo, but that name was actually given to you by the Europeans? Have you ever bothered to ask yourself, what is the origin of your tribal identity? Who coined the name? and when. So these are for the likes of Magnus Oraka who do not understand the history of the area, the history of the Urobo he claims he is. He said he's an Urobo man but he has no history about it. So our interest is to show you what they are doing to the Negroes because it's deliberate. The slave master is the sponsor of the Fulanese, the same way they were during the slave trade. And for the sake of context, we see here that Esther relates that she was born in the Igbo country about one day's journey from the sea coast where her grandmother lived to whom she was sent on a visit by her father while there the village was attacked by a body of negroes and in bracket she knows not of what country nor on what account on whose approach she and all the women were sent into the woods where a party of the enemy found them and carried away all such as were able to travel. Remember as we always told you, the hunting was done by what you call the Nigerian army today. This is why you see that the Free Nando Kano demonstration can go on in London where the slave master is the biggest beneficiary of one Nigeria. Nobody gets shot but their slave hunting partners because of their lack of humanity and common sense, they kill their own supposed siblings in defense of the same one Nigeria that benefits the slave master, not them all, but the slave master. So when we tell you that they lack humanity and common sense, you don't have any reason to doubt us. But then if you looked at this story, you will see that they don't know who was behind the attack, but the attack was usually put on by the army. Remember, there were no newspapers, there were no radios, there were no televisions. Peaceful villages were just invaded by the slave hunters, especially the Arabs, and then people were packed, captured. The old people that they could not take away, they will kill them. And you saw that she escaped into the bush and then the enemies were already waiting there, which is what you see the Nigerian army do for them today. Never forget that the reason the slave master was able to sell the dummy that the Negroes were like cattle was to justify his ability to be able to capture them. That's why you see that the British is the biggest force against Biafra and Ambazonia freedom today. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research and watch their body language. Let us also reference British Nigeria, a geographical and historical description of the British positions adjacent to the Niger River, West Africa, by Lieutenant Colonel A.F. Makula Ferryman, and this was published 1902. And here we are told that the most popular method of classifying the natives of this portion of Africa is under three heads, visibly hermetic, negroid and negro. So the important thing here is for you to see that the negro is different from the hermetic and different from the negroid. And it goes further to say the Hamites are supposed to have had their origin in southwestern Asia, to have immigrated into Africa at some unknown time and to be represented in the Western Sudan by the Baba division of the Libyan group, in which, as previously pointed out, possibly belong the Fulas, the Bonos, and the Bogos. Now, remember when they talk Sudan here, it does not mean the Sudan you know today is talking about northern Nigeria. And here is our interest. It says the Negroid is the link between the Hamite and the Negro, resulting from intermarriage while the negro is the west african pure and simple whose blood has remained unadulterated by the foreigner this classification is at first sight clear enough but an element of confusion appears when we find the negroes described as sons of ham and mohammedans in general spoken of as arabs practically we have only to deal with hamites negroes and a cross between the two the first and the last holy mohammedan the Negro in the main pagan, though where he has been conquered, Mohammedan. So our interest is, though where he has been conquered, Mohammedan, and the fact that the Negro is the main pagan. Please remember in response to these comments that we are saying that the Negro's paganism is actually the truth and the real way of life to the creature and to nature. 
while the slave masters Islam and Christianity are mere golden caps that have no power and no salvation in them. And also you might as well note here that there are nothing like a joy, shikri or robo, all those things. Those names were all coined by the slave master. They understand what games they are playing, which is coded in their book anyway. We shall look at that in a different video. And now to the comments we received. Remember the one from Mecca said that the Negroes or Africans or whatever he chooses to call them, we are focusing on the Negroes, could have been Christians before the slave master came, which is a lie. So he referenced the book of 1880, whatever that means, but our interest is to use books published before 1880 to debunk that lie. So let us reference a new voyage to Guinea describing the customs, manners, soil, climate, habits, buildings, education, etc. Likewise, an account of their animals, minerals, etc. with great variety of entertaining incidents worthy of observation that happened during the author's travels in that large country. Remember, this was the author writing, not that he had from someone else. So wherever they put a lie, we will use common sense to debunk the lie then we will assume that he was writing what he saw so this was by william smith esquire appointed by the royal african company that was the biggest exporter of negro slaves in human history and so they appointed this man to survey their settlements make discoveries etc and this book was published 1744 which is about 136 years before the one he talked about in 1880 and here is what the natives said. The discerning natives account it their greatest unhappiness that they were ever visited by the Europeans. They say that we Christians introduced the traffic of slaves and that before our coming they lived in peace. But say they, it is observable that wherever Christianity comes, there come with it a sword, a gun, powder and ball. And indeed, thus far, they say right, for the Christians are continually at war, one with another. Now, he is telling us that the Negroes were Christians before the Europeans came. If they were Christians, would they be saying this? The answer is no. But let us see what this same author goes on to say. And he writes, All the time I lived here, I never once heard of those detestable and unnatural crimes of sodomy and bestiality so much practiced among Christians. Whether it is better to be Negro in morality or an European is with me easily decided. A Guinean by trading in the parts prescribed him by his ancestors, parts natural, pleasant and diverting, is in the plain road to be a good and happy man. But the European has fought so many inventions and has endeavored to put so many restrictions upon nature that it would be next to a miracle if he were either happy or good. Tell the Guinean of chastity and of living celibate and he laughs at it as a chimera and says that there is neither chastity nor modesty in living the life of a monk or a nun and that the religion which puts on nature such negatives is a religion unreasonable and unnatural. And so again we ask you, does this look like people who were Christians before the slave masters came? The answer would be no. At least we see what they are saying. 